all of this takes time and experience. And I, I, I said this to my kids growing up, but spend an hour a day every day learning something. And if it's like social media or if it's whatever, become an expert in it. And everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing re it, how revenue is vanity, is profit sanity, and balancing COGS and ROAS for profitable growth. Great sub as topic today. So we're also going to be talking about why is calculating and understanding a break-even ROAS so important? Is it important to think about marketing as an investment rather than expense? And what are some good challenges uh, brands are facing in e-commerce space on Amazon? Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Okay, so like I mentioned, today we're talking about how revenues vanity, profit is sanity, balancing COGS and ROAS for profitable growth. I think this is very important to anybody who's selling online to understand this. Our guest co-founded AI Commerce, a global digital marketing agency with the focus on e-commerce and marketplaces, a proven, a, a proven marketing and advertising executive with an entrepreneurial approach. He is also a regular speaker, at notable events and contributes to several industry publications. He currently lives with his family and a stubborn pug in Charlotte, North Carolina. Please welcome, well, pretty soon, uh, Jeff Campbell, first time guest. All right, Kels, let's have a word from our sponsor. Launching products isn't like it used to be. To successfully launch your product, you need to hit that algorithm from all sides. Driving external sales, boosting social signals, and increasing product listing engagement are fundamental to success. Rebate is the first and only launch platform that delivers across this broad range. Get your product featured on Amazon.Live through Rebate's Influencer Program. With this service, your product gets instant exposure to large audiences of shoppers and permanent placement on Amazon Influencer Storefront, which drives perpetual sales. Run a sweepstakes campaign on Rebate and connect with shoppers off Amazon. And lastly, drive external sales with tried and true deals campaigns. Visit Rebate.com today and get started with your 14-day free trial. Welcome, Jeff. Hey, Norm. How's the beard? Yeah, the beard's going okay. It's going okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Now, we don't usually have guests on that don't have beards, so we made an exception. So you must be pretty god good. You must you must be awesome. I gu I guess you need to book me for next November because it it left soon after. But uh, uh, okay, all it, right. It was it was there for actually two months, and then uh then it had to go. So you know this the spring look. You know you don't uh, well, want the wind resistance too at, when you exercise. It, it, exactly. Like Kelsey's been growing it since he was a teenager, and he just <laughs> he it just doesn't kick in. It hasn't gone viral yet. Put it that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is an interesting topic, you know, uh, about uh, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity. Um, very interested to hear what you have to say about this and balancing cogs and ROAS for profitable growth. So why don't we start? Like, well, I don't even know where to start. Um, maybe, I, I think maybe the best thing to do is just for anybody who's listening, who's new, just to define ROAS and COGS, just that simple. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start with ROAS, right? Re uh, return on advertising spend, it's sales divided by cost. If you're an Amazon uh, only seller, uh, you, the, the biggest tell is you are using ACOS, which is advertising cost of sales. And that's the inverse, cost divided by sales, right? So um, if you want to look a little bit bigger than an Amazon seller, use ROAS and not ACOS. That's always kind of a tell of somebody who uh, hasn't realized that Amazon is only the beginning and not the end all be all. Not to bash them, but boy, there's a world out there. Um, so the more you spend uh, and, and ROAS, I think you say it is for every dollar you spend, it's how many dollars in revenue come in. So if you have a four dollar ROAS, you spend a dollar, you're getting four dollars back. With the world of Amazon, you do want to clarify if you're talking about ad ROAS or total ROAS, same with like 
you know, ACOS and, and total right. ACOS or tacos as the hungry people say during lunch. Um, so, you know, do, do clarify that. I think Amazon is a bit of a different beast because we know the more you spend on Amazon, the more visibility your organic listings seem to get. Um, so you do want to look at total ROAS or total ACOS as well as just the advertising silo, but it is, it is connected. And that's very different um, from really every other channel. Um, real quick before I get into COGS, my, my background, and I've been doing this since like 2001, started in, in search and Google and then social and DSP and grew from that. Um, I, I started a company with a couple of buddies uh, that was bought by one of the big holding companies, $4 billion in annual US spend. We were the top three with Google, the top three with, with Facebook. And then two years ago, I said, hey, let's try something totally new go all in on Amazon, start something new, maybe have a nice exit again. And, and here we are. And again, the, the amount of people, and I've heard you say it too, that oh, I'm a seven figure seller, I'm an eight figure seller, who, who cares what's your profit, right? And that's, I think, I think what, we're, what we're getting to here. So when you, when you think about the um, cost of goods sold, right? What's the landed cost uh, to make sure that we, we get it over to your, um, you know, your warehouse? And then getting it to the consumer. Um, so then, really, just boiling down every every variable cost that goes into that into that formula. So you're thinking about obviously the product cost itself. Um, you're thinking about any any shipping that goes on. Um, start thinking about damage uh, that might happen or returns, uh, and that's that's all adding up to be variable costs. So you take your AOV, your average order value, or let's say you have a forty dollar product cost right? You subtract out all those variable costs. Let's say you have a margin of 50%. So a $40 product, $20 of variable cost, keeping the numbers simple. That leaves you with $20 of contribution margin profit is, is a lot of people call it. But basically you have $20 to play with for, you know, OPEX or media cost or paying an agency or whatever it might be, or just to put in your pocket, but you got to sell the goods. So that's, that's kind of playing out that formula to say, all right, I've got $20 to play with uh, to sell $40. So back to that row as sales divided by cost, my sales are $40 for a product sale. And then $20 is my, let's say, let's put all $20 to advertising cost. Um, but that's going to be my break even row as so that's a $2. So for every dollar I spent, spend, I need $2 back to break even. We obviously want to make a profit. But at the beginning, especially with Amazon, where you got to get that flywheel turning, you start really at that break even. You might even start with a bit of a loss. But um, mm -hmm. Norm, I tell you, over the, the years of doing this, it is amazing. The massive Fortune 50 companies that have come to me and said, hey, our ROAS goal is six. And I said, why? And they say, because it's 550 now and we need it higher. And I'm like, well, why is it 550? <laughs> What's your goal? And they've never done the math, Norm. So that's uh that, that's probably the the biggest message I can say is you know start start looking at your cogs and all the different fees and variable costs to calculate your contribution margin how much money you have to put toward media or whatever it is then calculate that break even uh, and understand in this case you know I I'm an, I need to for every dollar I get I need to get two dollars back and now you can look across all the portfolio beyond Amazon or within Amazon sponsored product, sponsored brand, DSP, whatever. And you can kind of understand it with the minimum of what everything needs to do and feed what works, right? Yeah. How much or how many sales do you have to make and know, know how much you have to spend? Uh, we were talking about cash flow. I guess it was Monday and just the misconceptions or how you can just get into a real snag if you don't understand these numbers, uh, these numbers that you're talking about. Uh, I'm just yeah. curious. Uh, we used to have a, a person that had a course that had, was know your numbers. It was very good. Um, I don't know. I don't think they offer it anymore. Do you know anybody who offers a course like that? Um, well, I teach at Wake Forest University. So, <laughs> so I, if you want to get into their digital marketing uh, master's program for uh, you can go to their website for, I think, 35K a year and get that master's oh, degree. Very good. I, I'm talking like Udemy style. <laughs> yeah, right, right, like on, on, on YouTube, right? Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it is it is amazing, like the, the 
the business owners that get it and understand COGS and variable costs and, and all this are far and few between. I wish there were more kind of financial hats uh, in, the, in the seller world. Um, and it's amazing, you know, you can have a product ID, but a uh, product, product idea, and you even understand all the levers of, of Amazon and the different marketplaces and digital media, but sometimes the, the profitability and, and the back end uh, is, is lost. Um, and that's, that's super important to be successful. And even seeing agencies really just not understand profitability, you know, some of my competitors um, in there, they're all about let's bring on the business. And it's like, but is it profitable business, right? Um, it's, it's the same with anything. So it's business 101. Um, yeah. I hope, I hope you can find those on YouTube and, and whatnot. Other, uh, other the, I mean, the course that I'm thinking of was, a, I think it was, uh, 497 and it was very good. Um, they, and it, it, it didn't get in to the deep details. It, it showed an average Amazon seller, what they needed what questions they needed to talk to their accountant or their bookkeepers about and making sure that they were, that they had the, the right ratios to look at so they could understand yeah. the basics of a, a financial um, statement, the, the financial statements. But um, yeah, we were talking about this just the last podcast about, all right, you get your PL, you don't get a cash flow statement. You never see your balance sheet, but it's just your bloody PL, which a yeah. lot of the times doesn't even have accurate information because it's recorded wrong. Yeah, and the and the back part of that revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, cash is king, right? I, I left that out of the title, not quite as catchy, but you know, <laughs> it's it's important to remember cash flow, for example, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's just a topic that's not talked enough uh, enough about. But uh, something uh, probably the most important thing, Jeff, uh, that I have to say is I did just post it. Um, it's uh, Kelsey's birthday today, and we're having a live uh, happy birthday sing-along. So anybody who knows any of our uh, regular listeners, please ping them, and we're going to bring you all on live if you'd like. Marsha, I can't wait. Uh, Rad, if you'd like. I know Luke already said he's going to come on. Um, Claudia, are you, if you come on, this would be awesome. So just, you know, the regular crowd. If you're a first-time listener, we're all about having a casual conversation, having some fun, and learning. So, uh, happy birthday is going to be uh, roughly around twelve thirty. We got fifteen minutes before the sing along. Jo uh, you can join us, Jeff, if you like. But uh... <laughs> I will. I will download the T Pain Auto Tune app. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so we're just just got fifteen minutes. I'll be fine. Okay, very good. So, why don't we go back? So. Uh, talking about calculating and understanding the, the break even again with ROAS and why that's so important. Yeah. Um, I, you know, so again, if, if you're setting up your, your long-term strategy, uh, we all know we need to invest, right. And, and build a brand, but there has to be a level of, you know, maybe that's at break even and having those numbers in front of you to understand that, all right, I, I'm, I'm happy to break even. I might not be happy to lose money or, you know, as you build out your forecast and your pro forma, maybe for two months, you're willing to go down to a, a one to one ROAS. Uh, so you're kind of trading dollars to, to build that brand and, and get some uh, get some revenue and, uh, and ROAS. Somebody's Live. excited. A yeah. Amazon must be at the door. <laughs> yeah. Right. Prime guys here. <laughs> there we go. Um, the, the, the other the thing that uh, some of the talking points that I thought were very interesting, uh, this is pre-recorded, like uh, when we, we when we reach out to our guests, we say, you know, are there any any questions that you think are um, that we should bring up? And this is one that I think is so important. Uh, and that's something that came back and you said, you know, why uh, why is it important to think about marketing as an investment? That's key as an investment rather than an expense. You want to expand on that? Yeah, it's it's amazing the the brands that are around and have that stain power and, and that I've worked with and they truly think differently. And I'll, I'll give you the example of Apple in a minute. But you think as almost the other side of the coin is Amazon, which Amazon like you, you really it's it's a low price shopping engine as long as you've got good reviews and ideally a differentiator, right? Um, if you're a brand like that matters in some purchases, but you know, I'm searching for a outdoor light right now. I don't really care what brand, as long as it's got good reviews and a good price, I'm happy. So 
it's almost this new world of e-com. And I think a lot of people who have started in the world of e-com don't understand the power of, of a brand. So I worked with, with Apple for many years and I'd be out in Cupertino and, you know, Steve would be walking, walking around the grounds and they'd always tell me to avoid them and, and stop dressing in khakis and a button down. Cause I look like a corporate corporate guy, but, uh, <laughs> Their, their, their uh, intensity on branding and, and media and marketing was just amazing. You know, from a, from a search standpoint, it's, it's not about ROAS. It was about being number one when somebody searched. Um, it wasn't about capturing the words, and, and I'm dating myself here, but when somebody was looking for, when they were MacBooks and, and rolling out MacBooks and everybody searched laptops, they, and I'm, I'm trying to teach them SEO and saying, hey, you, you need to, then build a page that says why a MacBook is not a laptop or a notebook, right? But that's where the search is. So you need some of those keywords on there. And they said, no, we're just, we're going to brand. We're going to be different. Um, we're not going to play that out. And you look at a lot of their media that's been spent, right? They grab that first pod in every commercial, in every magazine, they're, you know, the front cover, back cover type ads and never, never within. So that's, you know, maybe a drastic example, but just somebody who really spent that money to show they were different and then let the content and the products kind of speak for themselves. Um, I, I don't know if that's a lost art at this point. Um, that might be an overreaction. But again, when you look at Amazon, it is starting to allow some mid and upper funnel uh, advertising. You know, sponsor brand video is probably one of the best examples. Like you can finally see the products versus just shopping at price and the number of reviews. So, you know, there is a lot lost art. And I think that a lot of people um, need to choose a path and say, Hey, do I have a true differentiator? Am I going to be low price or am I going to build a brand that people are going to recognize and maybe pay up for a few dollars? And maybe Amazon's not the, the best channel for that third person. Um, but it certainly does help. You know, you go to buy some, you know, soccer cleats for your kid. And it's like, I haven't heard of any of these brands, but they're cheap. The reviews are good, but you know what? A few dollars more is Under Armour or Nike or Adidas. I feel safe. I know their brands. I know their quality. And I'm willing to pay a little bit more for them. That's how it kind of works. So, you know, you think about DSPs and sponsored display and people that, you know, you can, you can chase them around the internet with some ads that all helps with branding. That all helps not only get your brand into the consideration set, but also remind them that they, they looked at it. They, they might want to purchase it. So yeah, I see in as again, when my career shifted from Seven, 18 years of, you know, working with big brands, Mercedes and Lowe's and Apple uh, and FedEx to working with like e-com and small and mid-size e-com, their, their desire to, you know, hit the online return is, is important for a small business. But I've, I've seen a lot less of a desire to build a brand and play in the mid and upper funnel, which doesn't have an immediate, you know, 24 hour high ROAS, right? But, but we already calculated it. As long as you're at a $2 row as, let's play the long game, right? It's not all going to convert. Let's try out connected TV. That's the number one growth area right now, right? Amazon's just the beginning. Let's try out Walmart. Let's try out different retail media networks. Um, those right. are all really important to see if, if we can start playing and boosting some of our products that are on some of these different retail sites. Yeah. And I even take a look at the business models that we're taking a look at. Like, let's say the average micro brand that's on Amazon and they were all going after growth. So not necessarily profitability, profitability, uh, you know, that almost became secondary because we were talking about it. It was all top line revenue people were talking about, which made no sense. And a lot of uh, sellers just didn't monitor it properly, but the aggregators came around and, I asked, I don't know how many aggregators about this, but I said um, there was a company that I'm involved in with and they were concentrating building brand. They were, they were looking at brand. Okay. Yeah. Not growth. It was just, it was brand. And I asked the aggregators, well, would you ever consider taking a look at this? Because they're not profitable but they've spent their marketing dollars on uh, their brand growth. So people, brand awareness. So this was about two years ago. And over those two years, since because brand recognition started to kick in, nobody would pick them up at this. Nobody, nobody was interested yeah. in the model. They told me to go fly a kite. And today they went from 10 million back that back uh, two years ago 
They're at $45 million right now. Growth is growing crazy. They have premium price products on the marketplace and they're just kicking butt for any of these cheap Chinese uh, products that are on the market. And now the brand has taken off. So it was years of just no profit whatsoever, focus on brand. And now brand's taken off and who knows where it's going to go. But that's the big difference, you know, when we're talking about these marketing expenses. And at least, you know, when you were talking and, you know, when I first saw this uh, talking point, I just thought, well, that's a perfect example of where you can take marketing. And you, you, I mean, you really do have to know which model are you going to go for. But right. if, if you're two feet into it and you're looking for growth, brand expansion or brand awareness is definitely something to work on. And I don't know. Do you know, um, I mentioned this guy on the, uh, on the uh, podcast quite a bit, Joe Martin from Boxy Charm. Not, not personally, but no. All right. Man. So Boxy Charm was premium beauty products. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they extended their brand just through influencers. They spent huge dollars with the K Kardashians and all these tier one influencers. Yeah. Built the brand, sold it for $500 million. Yeah. In years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and Norm, we're so price focused and immediate immediacy of revenue on Amazon. And I think that's just kind of the nature. And, and again, that's the topic of the podcast, but 62%, according to the last uh, e-marketer study, 62% of e-com sales are off Amazon, don't happen on Amazon, the majority. So, you know, so many people again amazon might just be your beginning might just be your start but you got it you got to go beyond and i think that's a good point of what you can do you mentioned influencers social commerce is growing fast connected tv right um so can these, i stop you there with connected yeah. tv what are you talking about oh connected tv is wonderful wonderful so if you're familiar with dsp so amazon has a dsp um they're a place where all sorts of sites and and providers and from hulu to um you know youtube will put their inventory and say hey here's some uh here's some places where you guys can buy and we as the buyers the brands as the buyer say hey i'm looking for this type of person and that could be gender household income uh behaviors interest uh etc and say and here's all my content i've got some audio contents uh, I've got six second and 15 second videos. I have some display ads, et cetera. When you see these people, I'm willing to pay X, right? And then there's that in, in nanoseconds micro auction that happens when somebody is, you know, on YouTube and there's a, you know, a pod that comes up with, um, with an advertisement and it says, Hey, this person's willing to pay X CPM or cost per click or whatever the model might be. And you can show the ad, right? And so um, that can extend to, you know, connected devices as people are watching TV on their phones or through connected TVs. And it's, you know, the simple one is HGTV watchers. They're interested in home improvement. If I'm Lowe's or I'm Home Depot, that's, that's a great audience to buy. And not just because they're, they're watching that show, but I can also see and have data that they've been really interested in HGTV, but I might be able to buy that person uh, watching a different network, right? Or that TV, that household, that IP address, or is, you know, they've gone over to the really detailed how to, uh, on YouTube, learning how to install that floodlight. Now I can hit them again with all my wonderful products that, that are down the road at Lowe's and, and Home Depot. That's based on that topic and some of their behaviors. So that's why it's, it's number one. I mean, I think that the, the video, the site, the sound is just, um, it does move you and it goes a little bit back to, to branding even. Uh, but now we've got a closed loop system, right? So I can show you, and you think of Amazon who does this really well, they've got prime TV, they've bought some, some wonderful content, like, you know, Thursday night football, they've got audible from a podcast standpoint, they know your behaviors on Amazon. They know what you've looked at, what's in your card, et cetera. And now people can go mid and upper funnel and say, Hey man, this, this guy does his own home improvement. I think he's interested in a floodlight. Um, I, I, I mean, they literally could advertise to me while I'm listening on my dog walk, uh, on a, on a podcast with a, with a floodlight ad. Right. And that's an audio, but video would be the same thing. Okay. I get it. Um, all right. So we are at the bottom of the hour and, Ooh. uh, it's perfect time to sing happy birthday to Kelsey. 
Uh, first, I see Claudia is a little bit too shy. Marsha or Howard. Uh, I see uh, Rad's there too. Luke, I see Luke's already chimed in. Anybody who wants to uh, take part in this, we'll, what we'll do is right after the sponsored, uh, the, uh, the commercial uh, break, we'll come back and sing it. But at this point, we always talk about hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people, you get a second entry, and that's our giveaway at every podcast. So why don't we do this, Jeff? Uh, talk about the uh, giveaway today. What are you providing? All right. We're going to have some Amazon experts who work with dozens of brands go in and look at your listings, your brand store, and spend some time giving a free audit and uh, even roadmap with suggestions. All right. Very good. So that's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Uh, tag two people. You get a second entry. And it's uh, if you haven't yet, you're, and we'll give you all the contact information, you got to check out Jeff's company. Uh, we're talking real experts real experts that have brands that have sunk their own money into their brands uh, that are doing this as well. So anyways, hashtag wheel of Kelsey. There we go. I see Rad's already doing it. Tag two people. You get a second entry. All right. So let's go to a commercial and then we'll come right back. I want to thank Jeff Schick legal for sponsoring this episode of lunch with Norm. You've probably heard on the podcast about Amazon suspensions. They're very real. It can happen at any time. And when it does happen, how do you get out of it? How does the little guy like you and me get out of these suspensions without paying an arm and a leg in legal fees? This is where Jeff Schick Legal is here to help. For a very low monthly retainer, for only $89, get access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. That's right. You can sit back, relax, enjoy that cup of coffee while listening to the Lunch with Norm podcast, knowing that you have an advocate and a partner in your business success. But wait, just mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Get the protection you need and visit jeffschick.com today. That's J E F F. S-C-H-I-C-K.com. Now let's get back to the show. All right. Just out of curiosity, Jeff, what value would you put on that audit? Whew. If we're, um, I mean, cer certainly, you know, $500 at a minimum, but, uh, you know, if we, if we see a real opportunity, I mean, we're happy to spend, uh, spend some more time talking about what, uh, what some potential really is and certainly could, uh, double or triple that number. Okay. Very good. I just wanted to show that because when we talk about audits, uh, it, it can change your business. I, I did this the other day on a consult call. Not I was calling a consultant on this. And they picked up probably 10 different things that were, I should have known. And they picked it up and I, because I'm in the business, I didn't see. Yeah. And so it's the same thing with an audit. So anyways, I, I can't say enough about um, getting uh, brand audits done uh, or listing audits done by true experts. Okay. So anyways, where is Luke? Is Luke the only brave person to come on here? Oh, we got Marsha too. Very good. <laughs> okay. So all we have to do is bring Kelsey on and we'll have this birthday extravaganza. Are you ready for this? Come on, Kelsey. You have to put your mic on. Be professional at this point. There we go. You'd think I'd uh, know that by now. But. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's a good thing. Okay, so hey, Marsha. Hey, Luke. How's it going? Awesome. Doing great. You guys are brave souls. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> I'm so glad to get to see Kelsey on his birthday because Kelsey does so much for all the Beard Nation. And this is our fun little way to say thank you and happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Marsha. And <laughs> Luke, it's nice to Back finally back. see you in person. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, awesome. oh, con. Oh, look what mom's even bringing out here. Oh, look, look at mom. Oh, we got okay. <laughs> so, we've got the birthday hat, and you have to sit over here. Where? Okay, we're all singing happy birthday. Oh, okay, you lead us. I okay, love the hat. <laughs> <laughs> one. Oh, oh Rad's coming on. Okay, Kelsey. one la last second, and then we'll go. Okay, 
I think we're good. One, two, three. <gasps> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Boy Blunder. Happy birthday to you. Blow the candles. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Jeff, <laughs> thank you for being a part of this. <laughs> what, <laughs> you didn't know you were surprise. being what are you doing brought to into celebrate? this. Sorry? What are you doing to celebrate? Uh, me and my friends are going for uh, some all-you-can-eat sushi. So, uh, yeah, super yeah, excited. So, lucky the uh, podcast isn't tomorrow because he'd probably still be in bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Marsha, Luke, thank you so much for the uh, the, the song. That was awesome, guys. Yeah. Thank you. See you next year. See ya. Hopefully before that. <laughs> All right. So, now we can get back to the uh, the podcast. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for everybody for the birthday wishes and uh, coming on and singing. That was good. Um, why don't we talk about uh, what are some challenges brands are facing right now in the e-commerce space? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as, as we started our, our background at AI Commerce, I mean, we, we own brands uh, first and foremost, and then decided um, once we'd figured out a, a few brands and grown some to upwards of 50 million, we should roll out an agency model, but still owning brands and, and having some challenges. So one is, um, you know, profitability, I think, is, is, is tightening and really the need to diversify beyond Amazon. Um, so it's kind of a challenge and a solution there. And I think you've covered that pretty well on this podcast. The fees are tightening and, and Amazon's taking a little bit more than their, their pound of flesh. So, um, again, uh, you know, the, the Walmart has the lower CPCs and, and ROAS is stronger. Um, you're starting to see a lot of B2B and really uh, niche marketplaces uh, popping up. I mean, things like Tundra and, and Fair are big for our clients and, and certainly Amazon B2B as well. Um, so, you know, profitability and trying to find solutions beyond and not, you know, there's only so much juice you can squeeze out of Amazon. It's a lot of juice. It's still the, the major player, but sometimes you got to just go reach for that second piece of fruit to squeeze. Um, so that's important. Um, knockoffs and counterfeits have been, have been tough. Mm. Um, so one of our own brands is Lumi Pets and, uh, their, uh, silicone LED nightlights keep the monsters away. And uh, we manufacture them in China. And unfortunately, that manufacturer um, also likes to manufacture the same ones and put them on Alibaba, which then appear for a few wow. dollars less on Amazon and on Target and on Walmart and, and on and on. Um, so it's been really tough. And, and we've been down the road of uh, trademarks and even global trademarks. Yep. And it's, um, we, we've actually given up on that, right? It is whack-a-mole. Uh, some of those Chinese companies will just change their name. And uh, I mean, you're, you're on to the next one. So it's tough. So we stay ahead of them with um, really just the product development cycle. So having to, in, in that case, there's, you know, bears and pandas and whatever. Well, let's come up with dolphins and starfish and astronauts and whatever. And so the product cycle just has to be a little faster. We've looked at manufacturing in other places um, from Mexico and South America to Southeast Asia. And the uh, the raw goods and the cost just um, they're they're in China, so it's it's tough to uh, to kind of change, and and then our profitability gets even worse. And you know when you're when you're suffering a few dollars higher than the rest, again it, we got to lean on that brand a bit, and that brand helps. We're in a lot of physical retail as well, but um, that's certainly a challenge uh, as well. Is there any way that you could take that product and break it into three different companies? with different molds for these like unicorns or whatever with the one, uh, you know, a couple with the other. And so at least you're not going to get all three and you can kind of create that nuclear bomb sort of agreement that it will at least okay. scare them a little bit at the beginning. Um, so you own the molds uh, and a lot of times that doesn't even care, but um, it just, just at least you have three opportunities for one of them to be trustworthy rather than all three to be untrustworthy and they're on Alibaba or selling direct. Yeah, that, that's a really good idea. Um, but also besides just the types of, um, of animals, if you will, or molds, um, you know, some of the functionality, getting Bluetooth and speakers and, you know, some white noise. And, you know, there's, there's a lot we could do from a product development standpoint besides just the shape. 
to kind of say, hey, for, you know, now instead of maybe three or $4 more, five or $6 more, you get a whole differentiated, you know, product feature that isn't available in those knockoffs. So yeah, I think all, all good solutions, but uh, I think a challenge for a lot of folks. And I saw something where um, I think it was like set over 70% of new sellers last year were China-based, right? So they've got a heck of a lot less middlemen and they are true competition. And I look at the US, one out of every five sales is online um, for us. So 20%. China, you have any idea what the percent of- I, It would be crazy. Is? It would be crazy. 60, yeah, it's almost almost 60% now. So high 50s. Wow. So they are they are absolutely online more than than retail and, and offline. So they're darn good at it, right? They're good at merchandising and selling and branding and pricing and uh, delivery, shipping and all that. And that's why I think you're seeing more apps and more Chinese based sellers or marketplaces starting to pop up on our soil as well. What's the number one app as of last week on Apple? Yeah, is it is it Shein? Shein? Do tell. Timu. Timu. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, same, same. Yeah. T E M U. Right. Yeah. T E M U. And, uh, is, is that the proper uh, pronunciation? I like it. Okay. Because, uh, they, yeah, they have a, a parent company. I think it's what Pindalu pin pin Luo uh, in like China, it. but yeah. it's the number one app being downloaded right now. Yeah. Um, for Apple. Real low cost goods there, right? Yeah, yeah. They, Shein, and again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either. Is is more apparel, but same same thing. Um, again, there, it, it's interesting. It, it's just you're starting to see some trends like live streaming. Like I think you'll see more of that come from like a TikTok in terms of e-commerce sales. And you know, if you're if you're a seller, um, there's a good chance that Amazon hasn't adopted, or or the users of Amazon haven't adopted some of these traits yet. And you start to see them through some of these other apps and some of these other sellers. So again, content wise, uh, investment wise, things to think about if you're a, if you're a brand and where you might want to, uh, you know, test or, or put some investment behind. Yeah. And there's a lot out there, even when you want to go out and do sort of your own independent channel, like, uh, uh, what was it? It's Google that has shop loop. Yeah. Most people haven't heard of it. Uh, you know, is it worth going and doing? But there's so many ways to get the word out there um, and just take advantage, like you were saying, outside of Amazon. And I see there's a question coming up there, and we'll get to that shortly. Um, all right. So another thing, and we did touch a, a bit on it, by, um, but uh, why is calculating and understanding contribution margin important? So we were just talking about contribution margin, uh, margin at the very beginning, and how can brands use it? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, it's for the break even row as and really understanding performance. And one analogy I like to use is a pie, right? So every, every company has only so much money or so, so much, let's call it a pie for their, for their, uh, paid media and, and their digital investments. Right. But that pie, is it the right shape at this point? Should it be growing more? And then the individual slices, right? Those are going to ebb and flow in terms of their size. So what I'm getting at is you need to have kind of one uh, metric and it's ROAS, it, it might be contribution margin or profitability, but that's that's how you have to measure all of these different channels. So if, if Timu or Shein or whatever is, is you know, let's, let's add that pie slice, something probably has to shrink, right? And so you need to look at the data uh, the profitability uh, and and really make that determinant, uh, you know, that determination of, all right, this is going to shrink and this is going to grow, right? Everybody's been cutting Twitter for the last year or, hey, let's, you know, so where are you going to invest in some of these things? Um, and when it, when it comes to KPIs, uh, you know, I'll, I'll urge you, and again, this is the professor and me talking, you need, you need a volume KPI and you need an efficiency KPI. So, ROAS or contribution margin uh, or, or contribution margin percent, those are efficiency, but you also need to look at volume. So, um, you know, it's, it's hopefully a digital marketing 101. You can, you can shrink volume and have really great efficiency, but cool, I've got no volume. I've got no revenue coming in or I've got no margin coming in. So how do you balance both of those? So looking at both the volume and the efficiency metric across all of your different channels or your portfolio to understand where you should flex and, and where you should uh, should pull back. And 
that also, you know, is something consciously you probably want to take 10% of and say, Hey, 10%, I'm going to leave fluid for, for testing, right. And try Timu or try, you know, fair or Tundra or whatever it might be. That's, that's next because, uh, you know, I joke, we live in dog years, one year equals seven is probably worse than that. Right. We don't know six months from now, what's going to be new and next, but we got to be flexible and nimble. Right. Especially nowadays. <laughs> I, I sp- I've been doing this a while that norm. It's, 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 it's crazy. It stayed crazy. Yeah. You, you know, I, re- I remember, uh, when I was in grade seven back in Montreal and, and my, uh, my, uh, teacher was saying how things were going to just continue to go faster and faster and faster. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. The amount yeah. that everything is changing. Like we just, we tried not to do this, but we just laid off a bunch of writers. We kept some as a editors, but we don't need that anymore. Yeah. Like, we right. we need to have quality content, which is very important. So you have to, and I'm going to just go down a different rabbit hole really quickly. So chat GPT four just came out yesterday. I've been taking course after course after course on this, trying to understand it. Yeah. And one thing that I've learned and I've seen it, I don't know about you, Jeff, but these bloody emails now that are coming in with basically you, you just take a look at it and you go, Oh, generated by chat GPT because yeah. you can, you, you can see how the algorithm wrote it and yeah. Yeah. they didn't use proper prompts because they, they think, Oh, and I'm saying that they very general, but just, Oh, I'm going to go to chat GPT and I'm going to write this automated thing. And I'm going to send it out to everybody not knowing that if you don't have the proper prompt or prompt engineering, that it's going to look horrible and you're going to look like everybody else. Yeah. I, I find myself when I'm writing emails, especially somebody I haven't talked to in a while or some cold outreach. I'm like, how do I not sound like a chat? You know, all those emails, those spam emails coming in. Like, I don't mean to pester you. Find or call. I'm like, I can't use that anymore. That's overused. I think that's that's yeah. So I'm, I'm with you, but uh, yeah, I mean, you are getting good, good content out of there. And I think you use them as ideas, the people that are copy and pasting and using them, you know, exactly. That's, that's not going to win, but you know, it's, it's one of the many inputs into writing good, good copy, good content, good emails. Yeah. And uh, as we've, uh, as we've taken courses and paid probably lots of money for Amazon training and, you know, paying your Amazon tax because, you know, you just launched something, you you have to learn, you know, basically on the streets. Um, then you launch your second one. All of this takes time and experience. And I, I, I said this to my kids growing up, but spend an hour a day, every day learning something. And if it's like social media or if it's whatever, become an expert in it. And that, I mean, you can make a really good living on whatever you choose to do just by learning that, like, let's just say it's chat GPT. Well, every, anybody who has a course now has a course on chat GPT, right? Uh, They're making it, but you know, how do you differentiate? How do you make things different? And that's the exact same thing on Amazon. If you're going to go out there and you're going to go to Alibaba and you're going to have a me too product, you're not going to get anywhere. If it looks crappy uh, and the listing looks crappy, you're going to come out at the lowest tier. If you have a, like, if you use either, uh, a product engineer or somebody that's innovative and come out with something different, the chances of succeeding are much higher. So there's, there's so many things that are going on right now that it's really changing the world. Yeah, I, I agree. It is, it is mind blowing and it is, it is a full-time job just to keep up. It is, uh, <laughs> it is, uh, you keep, you keep you up at night and it, it like, physically will just trying to keep up with everything that goes on. So, you know, I think it's good, um, you know, podcasts like this that boil down some of the main trends, um, you know, using the different uh, sources for data and understand kind of where, where the numbers are um, versus kind of the rumors. And it goes back to the theme of this, right? Revenue is vanity. It's not really about revenue. It's, it's about profitability and growing right. a profitable business. So, you know, you really need to use those numbers to figure out where to, where to look at your time, but always again, 10% testing, right? 10% new and next. Um, that's, that's just gotta be the way of life or you'll be left behind. And we, uh, you know, we, you know, we won't, we won't be doing, we won't be in this industry for long if we're not keeping up with that, that new and next. You're, you're, that's absolutely correct. And you can see that when you 
bring on a listing. And I, I remember back in the 2013 to 2016 area. So you put up a listing, you walked away, you never ever changed it. And all of a sudden your listing went from, you know, number one, number two, number three position right off the page. Yep. And I see that nowadays that, oh, I mm -hmm. put up my listing, never did anything to change it at yeah. all. Yeah. So and, anyway. And and we'll, we'll still have clients. It's tough to, you know, tough to get imagery, lifestyle imagery or um, certain details. And, uh, you know, it's, you're not, you're not going to win with an arm behind your back if you don't have the right content and solid listings. Right. So uh, let's see, we can go to a couple of questions. I also want to just say, hashtag wheel of Kelsey, tag two people. You will get a thorough listing audit. I can't tell you how much I think that that's could uh, help change what you're doing. Uh, you know, give you some really great insights, what to do, how to change it. So hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you'll uh, get entered. All right, let's have a question, Kels. Yeah. Uh, also, want to mention we have our ChatGBT webinar happening uh, with Sanguru next week. So I just dropped the link there. If you want to sign up, uh, it's going to be going over how to optimize your Amazon listing using ChatGPT. So check it out. Um, use the link provided to uh, sign up. And let's see. Let's get some questions uh, from Claudia. Is it worthwhile to try to sell on Target, Sears, Best Buy, Lowe's, etc., or is it just not worth your time? Yeah, um, it, it's a great question. It, certainly pick your battles. Uh, I would I would look at volume. I would look at your competitors. If there's any tools that that are able to show what competitors are doing out there, I mean, when you when you look at size, uh, you know, if you're in home goods, Target is is almost a must. They're very selective in who they who they pick. So again, I would uh, I would definitely go after that one. When it gets into you know Lowe's and Home Depot, and you, you start battling with kind of the one P versus three P relationships, like wholesaling versus um, being a being a third party seller, and that brings a whole dynamic into your world of like, hey, if they've got the ability to change pricing after buying you know through a PO at a discount, Amazon's gonna get a little mad if it sees lower prices on on Lowe's than what you're selling on on Amazon. So you've got some considerations on on that side. Uh, overall diversification, yes, absolutely need to diversify. If you haven't learned that in the last six months with your Amazon fees, uh, you, you might've been under a rock. So it is, it is a little, um, bit of science and art to pick the right ones to partner with, but by all means expand, um, what I, you know, what I've seen and maybe I can share after somehow is I would, I would look at some of the reports like eMarketer that show growth in the last year or overall share. That's going to help you determine where the where the consumers are versus just getting out there. Sears is not really a growing uh, spot, and and Best Buy I think was pretty flat last year. Um, so yeah, that's um, those are my my initial thoughts. You know, we had a um, it was it was a an event that Steve Simonson put on for Empowery, yeah. and we went over to uh, eBay, and we sat there with their biz uh, development team. And basically, everybody in the room, 80% of the room, uh, put up their hands that they used to be eBay um, uh, yeah. customers, however, or vendors. However, the platform sucked and they no longer were there. Nobody was. And uh, these guys showed us, there was two of them, what eBay's up to for brands. And it was amazing. And I brought over three beauty products from the same brand. And they sold one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in that month on eBay. Yeah, it was it was crazy, Un unbelievable. Yeah, e eBay Autos is is big. I mean, if you're in the auto area at all, you got to be in eBay. So I, I just pulled up, you know, the, the quick pie chart from um, from eMarketer in in February, and so Amazon thirty eight percent of the market, Walmart uh, sixty or six point four. Uh, Apple's about four, eBay's about three, Home Depot, Target, Costco, Best Buy, Carvana, Kroger, Wayfair. So those are kind of the top ones. And then from a growth standpoint, um, again, looking last year, percent change, Chewy was the was the largest growth. Uh, Walmart, Carvana, Kroger, Amazon, Lowe's, Apple, Costco, Home Depot, Target. Hmm. Um, so hopefully that, that list you can play back and uh, helps you pick your battles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And some of these that you don't typically think of uh, for a wholesale, like fair, yeah. 
you don't really think about Fair, but it's it's great, especially if you're a smaller brand. The other uh, Wayfair, different, completely different, right? Not related. I don't think they're related. No. Um, but Wayfair, I have a client that's had some problems on Amazon. They're, they were always getting some sort of email that was suspend, suspending their account. So they had to go and look. So they went on to Walmart. They got some results there. They went over to Wayfair, killed it. Yeah, yeah. Just we, didn't we've had, expect it. We've absolutely had clients um, leave Amazon and find more sales on even Walmart at at half of the um, half of the cost. So spending less, getting yeah. more sales, and so, and half of the down. hassles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, you know, everybody wants a piece of the pie, but it is it is you know going back to the pie analogy. There, there's there's a lot of different pieces to uh, to to think about. Okay, Kels, next question. All right, from Claudia. Uh, I heard that if you have molds in China, that there are some 3PLs that will store your mold in between production runs so that your supplier can't use your mold and steal your product. Have you heard of this, Norm? And do you think it's a good idea? Yeah, you can do that. Um, will they do it? That's the thing. Uh, Afalabia and I are going through that right now where the molds were bought and paid for and they're ours but will they even give them up these guys are jerks um you know they're they're in china this is one of the things about dealing in china and we know how to negotiate we know how to write our agreements and they're oh we can't find them uh, what do you mean you can't find them if we place an order with you you sure can find them so if if you can separate like and this is i think it was amy uh amy Weese, um, that she ended up taking her molds that were done and bringing them over to North America. But uh, you can definitely do it. How easy it is, I don't know. Um, and this would be a good one for you, actually, Jeff. Uh, so you have an idiot that starts knocking off and doing counterfeit products and, you know, taking those molds. Will they give you the molds because they need them to probably, uh, you know, knock off your product? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, definitely part of the agreement. I also, there might be some research to be done. I, I was talking to one guy recently, I haven't looked into it, but like an embossing on yep. in the yep. mold and, and require that is a, is, is one way to help. Cause then you can, you know, protect that. And the, the mold is basically forced to use that in, embossing mark um, if it's used again. Yeah. But then they make a mold and they just fill in the embossing and then uh, they can counterfeit yeah. it. But, but anyway, whack -a -mole. Whack -a -mole. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Whack-a-mole. But what you just said there is very important is an identifier, a unique identifier on the mold that shows that it's yours, whether you'll ever get them to ship it to a different manufacturer, because you have to remember that uh, Chinese manufacturers and chi Chinese sellers have a completely different business culture than what we have. And, uh, you know, it shows just in the way that they treat other suppliers or other sellers on Amazon. So it's the it's a culture. Um, so sometimes getting the uh, the molds sent over to another facility, uh, it just won't happen. But you could try. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And our last comment is from Rad. Uh, this is going back when we asked uh, our audience about any challenges they've had um with amazon and their experience and rad said that he stopped the patent on his product in 2008 for copycats and the manufacturers breached the contract so that was one issue um yeah that's a good point yeah okay i think that's the less uh, the last of the questions i'm just seeing uh muhammad uh, are you trying to enter the uh, the uh, Wheel of Kelsey today? Uh, just let us know and we'll enter your name. Uh, okay, anybody else entering today? We'll give you a second. We'll go over to a sponsor and then we'll go to the Wheel of Kelsey. I want to give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors to help keep this podcast running. The Lunch with Norm podcast would not be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro. Clear Ads, Jeff Schick Law, Rebate.com, Honu Worldwide, Digital Blacksmiths, Netfluence, Extreme Power, and Startup Club. Now back to the show. All right. So I guess this is the first time you've seen the Wheel of Kelsey, right, Jeff? No, sir. No? 
I've I've watched your podcast. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great, great. Spin All it, right, Kelsey, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> It's time for the Wheel of Health. Yanni, those commercials might be uh, in the next round. Not so far. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, Yanni, I wasn't sure if you uh, wanted to enter the Wheel of Kelsey, too. Um, if you did, just let me know, and we can just wait for a second. Um, but anyways, thank you, everyone, for entering the Wheel of Kelsey. We do this every single podcast, so if you are uh, interested, uh, just come back on the next podcast, and uh, we'll have another Wheel of Kelsey to spin. Uh, if you're the winner, please email me, kate at lunchwithnorm.com. And let me see. All right, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to give this a spin, and uh, here we go. And looks like Luke is our winner perfect. today. Luke, you're your perfect recipient for this. Uh, I, I think, Jeff, you, when you take a look at Luke's products, you're going to love them. Yeah, well, I saw him working on mountain bikes, so he's already found the way to my, uh, my heart in, <laughs> in that way. So that was pretty awesome. All right, you're off the hook. Thanks, everybody, and uh, thanks, Norm, and the sponsors. It was a uh, it was a good lunch. You know, it was it was really great, to, you know, talking with you, especially about you know the topic we had today. But you're so knowledgeable. Um, you know, we should get back and get have you back and talk about some other aspects of e-commerce. Right on, anytime. Perfect. And Jeff, um, how can people uh, contact you or? Uh, how can people get a hold of you if they're interested yes. in your services? So the, the site is aicommerce.com and my email address is jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, at aicommerce.com. Sounds awesome. All right, sir. Thank you again, and we will see you soon. And I hope everybody liked what they heard today. A different topic. Again, something we're not talking a lot about. And uh, I think it's important. Just like... It seems like there's been a series of topics that uh, are not really that well, or not a lot of people are talking about. And these last week or two, it's just been really great. The content off of those are bringing up topics that to be successful, you really have to understand. And I'm going to just recommend if you don't, or if you're not comfortable about uh, your numbers, you don't know them. You don't have to become an accountant. You just have to know the basics. So go find a course. It could be on uh, LinkedIn Learning. It could be uh, at, um, what is it called? Udemy. Or it's YouTube. But something to give you some working knowledge uh, about your uh, financial statements and how to work, uh, how to work it. Anyways, that's it. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.